A report today stated that Alicia Rushmanov has taken legal action against the company owned by Farad Mashiri. Somalia Holdings Limited, a company owned by Mashiri, is listed as a defendant in a case brought by Usmanov. Uh, multiple Everton bidders have apparently become aware of this case. Uh, one group had discussed if any payment is done to Mashiri as part of a sale, whether or not it could break the sanction laws that are in place against Russian um Russian owners, but apparently this case has already been settled, so this news is out in the Athletic today. And again, just a little further complication to everything that is going on around Everton at the moment. Obviously, Alisher Usmanov and Farad Mashiri were very close business associates for a number of years, owned companies together. So this is a little bit of a strange one that has come out today, but... Um, it doesn't directly affect Everton Football Club, of course it doesn't, but just another little further complication, isn't it? But just talking about those bidders for Everton Football Club, John Texter has reportedly agreed to cover Everton's £600 million plus debts and to pay Farad Mashiri an exit fee, which could reach £50 million over the next five years, depending on Everton's football and financial performance. That is according to a story in The Guardian. It was written by Matt Hughes. Um, so there you go. But we know that text that is in dialogue with Farad Mashiri to buy Everton Football Club. We also know uh, that he's got to sell his Crystal Palace shares. Uh, and the Eagle Holdings Group are wanting to take Everton, of course. And that can only be done once the Crystal Palace shares have been sold. Uh, therefore, an imminent sale of Everton Football Club doesn't appear to be on the horizon. Things can change in a heartbeat. Of course, they can. But obviously, at the time of this news bulletin, it is uh, still all up in the air. Uh, Everton have released footage from inside the new concourse at Everton's new stadium, which is coming along tremendously well. Last week was the uh, the images of the badge in the dressing room coloured in, but uh, these latest video, this latest video showing the development of the concourse at um, Bramley Mordoch is uh, all going well. And again, we're edging ever closer, aren't we, to completion? We're edging ever closer to the ground being done. We're seeing the pitch, um, all the, the prep for the pitch being done now as well. So we are getting to uh, to that situation soon where we'll all be looking, saying that stadium's completed. Why aren't we in it already? Uh, certainly that's what it feels like right now. Uh, Aurel Mangala played the last 30 minutes last night for Belgium as they were beaten 2-0 by France in the Nations League. He played alongside Amadou Onana. The two could face off at the weekend, of course, when Everton travelled to Aston Villa. We've had Onana this week saying that it was a good decision, or the best decision he could make, uh, with him leaving Everton for Aston Villa, basically because Villa play football that is more suited to him rather than Everton. So it should be an interesting afternoon at Villa Park at the weekend. And tonight, Jake O'Brien, Jordan Pickford and Vitaly Mikolenko could all feature for their respective countries tonight as they are all in international duty. I'm sure Sean Dyche and his coaching staff will just be hoping all three of them return to Everton unscathed. We obviously had Seamus Coleman coming off injured at the weekend. We don't want any more injuries regarding international football. That is it for the news. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching. See you later.